Welcome into McWhorter Stadium. It's beautiful in Clemson, South Carolina. The final game of day one of the Clemson Classic. The UNC Greensboro Spartans taking on the fourth ranked Clemson Tigers. Mark Childress here with Scott Whitlock. Fantastic weather. Both these teams have already won a game today. This should be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. UNC Greensboro is always near the top of the SOCON. Yep. They're a very well coached team. They got the advantage of being the home game in tonight's game home team in tonight's game. This ought to be a lot of fun. It was also a lot of fun if you're a Clemson fan. In game one, it was Mackenzie Clark. Anything started early? No doubt about it. She knew it too right off the bat. That was a two iron right out of this ballpark. And uh, Reagan Spencer got the start, just her third one of the season. She had five strikeouts. She looked great through four innings of work. Absolutely. She did a good job. A little shaky in the first. A little One bad luck hit, but she, uh, she did a great job and uh, then on Reagan Spencer just kind of shut them down and everybody got in the act. I've never seen so many subs in one game in all my life. Yeah, Houston with the two run homer to cap things off the ninth time the Tigers have run ruled an opponent this season and uh, Clemson moving to 22 and one on the year again because of the quirks of this tournament over the weekend. Clemson is actually going to be the visiting team in this game. That means this potent lineup gets to come up first. Clark Moore and Cagle to get things going in the first. Jacobson, Logaleo, Oda, Vieira, McLesh and Davenport and uh, head coach John Rittman will be calling the shots and Salem Ward, the freshman who's looked good so far this season for UNC Greensboro in the circle. Absolutely. She's done a very nice job. She's out there with a 207 ERA. She's three and one. And she's going to get a chance to work against one of the most prolific offenses in the country. UNC Greensboro won their game against Jacksonville earlier today, three to nothing. So both of these teams trying to go to two and zero oh on day one of the Clemson Classic. They're also set to square off again tomorrow at 5.30. There'll be four more games in the Clemson Classic tomorrow. Clemson will be playing Jacksonville at 3 o'clock and then UNC Greensboro again at 5.30 tomorrow. Absolutely. We hope that uh, if you can't get here to see it, that you'll tune in and you'll be with uh, the two of us again. Right, Mrs. Lowe, one and one. You saw Mackenzie Clark's rocket shot, two-run homer from the last game. That was home run number six of the season. She's driven in 17 runs as well. And it was a it was a shot, wasn't it? It got out of here in a hurry. Yes, it did. Wind is still blowing out toward left field, 10 miles an hour plus. It's been doing that pretty consistently today. So if you can't get one up into the atmosphere in left field, I think you can ride that wind a little bit further. Pop up. Second baseman settles under it. Brown, and that is out number one. Now, one of the things that Clemson's got to do is they've got to hit an offensive reset button because they're going to see much better pitching this, this game perhaps than they did a game ago. They were able to just really tee off on pitches. You see the defense right there with Lofton Cheek and Batten in the outfield, Maxwell, Shipley, Brown, and Lagarnia in the infield. This is Maddie Moore. She was one for one in the first game, scored two runs, looks at ball one. Lagrama, excuse me, I butchered the first baseman's name. I apologize. Ward working quickly, misses low. Don't mind people working quickly. This is a good team in UNC Greensboro. Hammered down the third base line. Maxwell stabs it for out number two. What a great play. Absolutely. Ball was hit on the button by Matty Moore and the third baseman was equal to the task. You see Maxwell get the glove up. Made the out, prevented a double and all that kind of good stuff. And that right there will Get your heart either pumping or stopping. <laughs> Maybe both. Yes. Valerie Cagle swings at the first pitch, hits it foul. She was one for two in the opener, plummeting her average all the way down to 522. Well, well we knew she'd cool off. Out of Yorktown, Virginia. It's on the outside corner, strike two, and Salem Ward. 
Hoping to get the Tigers 1-2-3 here in the top of the first. Everyone needs to remember, although we're playing here at McCorda Stadium, the Tigers are the visiting team on the scoreboard. Chop between short and third, long throw. They don't even bother to make it. Shipley just put it in her pocket, and that's another hit for Cagle. They had a shift on, not in terms of movement of, of positions, but they were very, very deep on Cagle. And when the shortstop had to go in the hole to make that, she was in shallow left field, and she did the wise thing by just putting that ball in her pocket. And now you'll have Jacobson hit with two outs and Cagle on first. Jacobson transferring here from Duke, playing her graduate season. She looks at ball one. She's a solid softball player. She does she has just everything right. Not as flashy as some of the others, but just a very, very good player. This is outside, 2-0. Oh. Cagle can run the base pass well. Isn't, isn't the fastest Tiger, but doesn't make mistakes out there on the base pass. She's an excellent base runner, and she's sneaky quick uh, when she's running like first to third. Jacobson pops one up over toward the dugout. Long way to go for the third baseman, Maxwell. She made the great defensive play earlier. She grabs the pop up here to end the top of the first. Spartans coming up, no score. And Again, UNC Greensboro, the home team in this game of the Clemson Classic. Cumbie Brown and Chartrands do up in the first. Janelle Brenneman in her 11th season with UNC Greensboro always has a solid team. And Millie Thompson's got some great numbers this year. Absolutely. Millie Thompson, fan favorite, outstanding pitcher. She's 7-0 on the year, 1.12 ERA. Completely different kind of pitcher than you normally see. She throws the ball hard. Obviously, she throws from the left side, but her best stuff is her breaking stuff and her off-speed stuff. This right here is a very, very good college pitcher. You can hear uh, Millie grunting as she throws the ball as well, all the way up here, one and one. Very, very, very animated out there. Pounces around on the mound like a tiger. Uh, no pun intended. Yep. Uh, but just an outstanding Outstanding player. Ball took a funny hop on Logaleo, and Delaney Cumby will be down on first base to start things for UNC Greensboro. Ball took a big hop to her. It looked like she had it fine. She just kind of handcuffed herself trying to gather that ball. I'm going to guess error, but I'm usually wrong. Cumbie was the Southern Conference Player of the Week earlier this season. And it was an error. They do nail that one to her. Mason Brown. Another senior. Number of seniors in the lineup. Yes. Four for UNCG. And are picked second in the Southern Conference this year. Southern Conference, good, good conference for softball. They usually have two or three really good teams. They surely do. It's a great historic conference. There's a lot of big time FBS football programs that back in the early days oh, yeah. were members of the Southern Conference. The Southern Conference predates the SEC. One bounces up there. Good job by Vieira to keep yep. that in front of her and keep Cumby at first base. And we thought we'd see Vieira in this game behind the plate. And we do. Brown has seven home runs on the season. Not a lot of stolen bases for UNCG. They're not very aggressive on the base pass, nope. but they love to hit the long ball. They rely on that for a lot of their scoring. And they do everything right defensively. They're, this is a well-coached team. There's off -speed that, pitch. There's that off speed. Yep, right in there for her first strikeout of the game. Janelle Brenneman got a great coaching resume. She's in her 11th season up there in 
Greensboro. They are extremely well coached. She played her college ball at Bloomsburg up in Pennsylvania. Nice. Under the great Jan Hutchison, a softball coach Hall of Famer. So she was an outstanding player there. She's well groomed for the position that she has now. Jordy Chartrand in the box from Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. A 1 1 from Thompson. There's that off speed again, right in there, 1 and 2. Lots of folks thinking about Greensboro today, not just for this softball game, but the Clemson Tigers men's basketball team will be taking on Virginia right around 9 30 tonight with a possible appearance in the ACC men's basketball finals on the line. And that's back to back strikeouts now yep. for Millie Thompson. That was that drop ball. That thing just went down. She's going to go back to the dugout and go, Coach, it was, it was somewhere else when I swung. There's some shadows on the field now as well between yep. the pitcher's mound and, or the pitcher's circle and home plate. I wonder if that's going to make it a little bit harder even to pick up the ball right now. Well, it, it, it is right now, and it will be for maybe another half inning until the shadow completely engrosses the circle all the way to the plate. But the ball is coming from the light into the dark right now. That sounded much more profound than it was from the light into the dark. It I, did. That was. We're getting all philosophical oh, here. Was, yeah, that, my I mind was wandering, Scott. I, I don't know where that, you were taking well, me. I'm not that intelligent. Well, actually, I am, but I didn't want to. <laughs> you, you just want to flex me. it here. Yeah. Modesty keeps me from bringing it to the forefront. Yeah, we appreciate that about you. You're welcome. Again, game four of day one of the Clemson Classic. There'll be four more games tomorrow if you want to get out here to McCorder Stadium. Check it out. That one got away in the dirt, and the base runner is able to scamper down to first base. So you got you got Crumby down there in scoring position. Now with two outs and a 3-1 count. So Samantha Lagrama. This is the four hole hitter. Pops one up in the infields. It's like Davenport under it. Four out number three. So Millie Thompson works around the error. We're off to ending number two. No score. It's D1 tomorrow. Should be, should be all right. There's John Ripman, the outstanding coach of the Clemson Tigers. An old Johnny Ball game is a veteran of this. Uh, profession he's had success everywhere he's went I've literally had the the pleasure of traveling around the world with that man a couple of times with this great game and uh, Clemson has uh, done well for themselves by opting to bring him here to up, upload this program and uh, they have they've done very well for themselves here in their third full season you see the all of the accolades there for him he's, Dressing fashionably in that orange with the hat on. It's that time of day now where Johnny usually starting to get a little hungry. <laughs> 546. Logaleo Oda Vieira due up for the Tigers here in the top of the seconds. Logaleo did a smart thing there. She was she showed bump, but she wasn't bunning. She was taking a pitch just to get a look at what's going on out there. Salem Ward in her second inning of work. Logaleo hits one right off the fists, about 15 feet up into the air, and Cumbie makes the easy play for out number one. She almost didn't have to move for that one. That was strange. That was it, right off, like right off the tape of the bat, right down on the handle. And that ball just spun straight up and came straight down. Now Ariel Oda. Takes ball one outside. This is a hard nosed player right here. Oda's a Swiss Army knife for this team. She does a little bit of everything. Can play a little outfield. DH. Goes up, lays down the bunt, and just goes foul. Had a good idea right there. They might have been catching Greensboro back on their heels. 
Oh, they had a big triple last weekend. One of the games against Syracuse. Yeah. To double up the uh, Tigers lead late in that game. Yeah, that was, a, yeah that, was, that was a clutch one right there. Good cut. You and I were lucky enough to be here for that. Tigers 22 and one, number four in the country in the ESPN and USA softball poll, as well as the USA Today NFCA softball poll. That's a pretty good start. Sure is. Their, their one blemish was a one nothing loss to Tennessee, which is another top 10 team. They were down in a tournament in Clearwater, Florida, excuse me, Tampa, Florida. Time call looks like the pitcher and the catcher couldn't get together on a signal there and Oda got impatient with him and asked for time. 2-2 two -two from Ward. Ow. Boy. Right off of the foot or right above the foot. Oh. Let's take uh -huh. another look at this and grimace all together. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh knee, off the knee and foot. Yeah. I hope that mom and grandma cannot hear what she's thinking. Left knee and right foot. Yeah, she's rubbing that out. I don't blame oh, her. Take oh, a little time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's grinning right now, kind of a grimace grin. Yeah. But uh, trust me, she's not pleased. No. Oda fouls that one away. Nice little battle going on now between Ward and Oda. Oda. But Mark, there's a, a great example between youth and age. Uh, because Oda rubbed it off, dug right back in the batter's box. I would still be laying on the ground, rolling. <laughs> yes. There'd be a stretcher coming out for yes. you right now. I mean, oh, what a play. Maxwell at third base, the second spectacular play she's made in this game. That was even better than the one she made in the top of the first. Absolutely. I don't even know if this ball was in fair territory, but she dove. Look at this extension. Woo. Oh, my. What a great play. I don't guess we can tell from that angle if it was a fair ball or a foul ball, but that right there is as good a play as you'll see. Making it look easy over there. In the hot corner, Brooklyn Maxwell. Make the hot corner turn cold. Certainly what they well. used to say. Abby Vieira, the catcher. Her first at bat of the day. JoJo Hyatt caught game one, the 10-1 Clemson victory. Over Bryant's. They are a little late on that one. Well, I'm surprised Maxwell didn't catch that too. She's caught everything else going her way. It's too easy. That's not worth her time. She's waiting. She's yeah. waiting. She's waiting for a bigger moment. Yeah, there we go. If I make three or four of these when they show me yeah. on Sports Center tonight, they can show all the plays yeah. together. Got to have a certain degree of difficulty to the catch. Vieira on the season, batting 289. She does have one home run and eight RBI. Takes ball two inside. Vieira, only a sophomore, but a talented one. Her freshman year got off to a slow start due to injury, but she came back in and really helped this team down the stretch, and she's got a bulk of the catching duties this year so far. It's a fly ball into left field. And Lofton grabs it for out number three. So Salem Ward's complete through two innings. Still no score in Clemson. Let's get to know uh, UNC Greensboro coach Janelle Brenneman. Outstanding coaching resume. She's had stops uh, at North Carolina, at South Carolina. She's been at Greensboro for 11 seasons. She was an outstanding player at Bloomsburg up in Pennsylvania, played for the Hall of Famer Jan Hutchinson. She has got a great resume and pedigree and has done a great job uh, for Greensboro since being there. Two-time Southern Conference Coach of the Year. They've been in the uh, national tournament twice. Outstanding coach. Brook Brooklyn Maxwell always works this way. You make a great defensive play in the top of the inning, you end up coming up in the bottom of the inning. Maxwell made that diving catch. She also hit a home run, had two RBI in their game earlier today, their win over Jacksonville. Hey, 
See what that play last half inning was outstanding. Thompson pump strike two in there. Millie Thompson, very animated pitcher. And I mean that as a compliment. That is part of her game. She just pounces around out there. Yeah, I was going to say stalking around yeah, a little you, bit. You don't have to wonder what's going on with her. Cagle, on the other hand, is very stone faced. You don't really know if she's too high or too low. But Millie will, Millie will let you know what she's thinking. Boy, Maxwell was so late on that ball. She yeah. barely got a piece of it. That's all you got to do. Give yourself another hack. Yep. So the shadows continue to reach across the infield. There aren't any now between the circle and home plate. So that should make it a little bit easier on the batters. Yep. But now there's still a little bit of light out there up the middle, second and short. Outfield still getting a lot of sunlight. The wind's freshening a little bit from the foul poles in the left field corner. And there's that big change up with a strikeout. Strikeout number three for Thompson already. I think all three of them have come on the same pitch. And it's not fair. I mean, that's a, <laughs> you see, <laughs> Billy ring her up. Yeah, she did. Helping out the home plate umpire. Yeah. Jesse Shipley steps in the box for UNC Greensboro. There's that pitch again for strike one. Uh, we did look not related to Will Shipley that we know of. Yep. First thing I thought of when I saw that last name. She's from Sugarland, Texas. Sugarland. That right there was another good pitch to start this at bat by Millie Thompson. When you go from 65 down to 53, it's just it is it's very hard for a, a hitter. Changing speeds is a huge asset if you can do it. I know everybody loves the power pitcher, and so do I, but this right here is a, yet another way of beating people. Rounder to Logaleo, over to Cagle for an easy and quick out number two. Tell you what, we're, ro we're rolling right along so far. Got her just to roll over on it, an easy play for Logaleo. Two quick, quick outs here in the bottom of the second. Blake Batten stepping in now for the Spartans. Off speed right in there, strike one. It's interesting, she <laughs> grunts even on the off speed. She does. Oh, yes, I know. You don't want to not grunt on the off yeah. speed because then they'd know what was coming. Yeah, but that right there is filthy. Right in there, strike two, and uh, Thompson feeling it this half inning. She went from 63, I mean 53 up to 64. And that right there, I mean, now as a, as a, uh, as a hitter, you're just like, Man, I don't know what's coming. Crowd getting behind Thompson. I got fussed at today by the gate attendants coming in, Mark. What'd, what'd you do? I didn't we bring talked my, about this. I, I didn't bring my hat. You didn't bring your hat? I didn't wear my hat. You know, my cowboy hat, I didn't, ah, I didn't wear okay. my hat in today. And okay. There was a situation about that. Threw everybody off. Logaleo goes deep into the hole. Long throw. Good scoop by Cagle. What a play by Logaleo. An even better one by Cagle to retire the side here in the bottom, in the bottom of the second. Let's take one more look as we go to break. Deep in the hole. Does the one hop on purpose. And the great scoop by Cagle. Tigers looking to get the bats going here in the third, but it was glove work in the bottom of the seconds. And sharp glove work makes a pitcher happy. Look at this right here. Look at Millie Thompson. Yeah. yeah. Make that play. Make me look good. Get me in that dugout. That's one of the things that Millie Thompson brings to the table. Energy. McClesh, Davenport, and Clark do up here in the third. McClesh, we know how quick she is. If she can get a bunt down, she's basically safe at first base. She did have a bunt single in the first game, scored two runs as well. 
All the infielders in. Yep. I mean, way in for the Spartans. Yeah, if she hit a line drive, could take, take somebody to the outfield with them. Shows bunt, pulls back, takes ball two. A lot of times a slapper can frustrate a pitcher because they're moving around. There's a lot of movement, yeah. you know, and uh, and also I've always wondered, of course, they will never admit it. I just wonder sometimes does it does it make the umpire's eyes move? Great off speed pitch and that to was, even the count. And that right there was a great example of the umpire staying in the zone and doing what what he or she should do. Normally two strikes, uh, infielders will scoot way back. Nobody moved an inch. The flash hits one high and deep to left field. So you've got Lofton going back. She makes the grab for out number one. And she did everything right on that play to the left fielder. She got turned, stayed with the ball all the way back there. That was Grace Lofton out there. That'll bring up Reedy Davenport. We are in the third inning. Davenport had two hits and three RBI in the first game. And it pops one up to the second baseman, Brown. And that's two quick outs here in the third. Salem Ward is coasting so far. She is making it look really, really easy, isn't she? Jumping on that first pitch. All right, Mark, now we can do a little bit of evaluating here. This is the second time through the batting order. That's right. Let's see what adjustments the Clemson hitters make. Clark has done a really, really good job out the shoot. She popped up to second earlier in this game, but she had the two-run rocket homer in game one earlier against Bryant. Shows bunt, pulls back. Hitters count now for Mackenzie Clark. Yep, she can pick out a zone. And if that ball's in that zone, she can try to line one out of here. We saw her do it earlier today. Lays the bunt down. Ward grabs it. Throw to first, and Mackenzie Clark beats it out. Second hit of the game for the Tigers. Got the base runner on with two outs. Brings up the hard hitting Maddie Moore. Maddie Moore line, hit a line drive. We see the replay here. Clark gets the butt down, runs really hard, and just kind of outruns the ball a little bit. I don't know that the second baseman ever got her foot on the bag. And that's going to bring up Moore, who's been red hot. Clark is a threat to steal. Moore hit a line drive to Maxwell that she made a good play on and back in the first. She also had a hit and scored two runs in the earlier game today. Tigers a visiting team here because of the tournament this weekend. That's why they're batting in the top of the third instead of the usual home bottom of the inning as Moore looks at strike one. You are correct, sir. 1-1 one, one count there. Coach Ripman, always thinking. Oh. More kind of an excuse me swing, and yeah. now she's behind one and two. You know what? Now would be a good time to start the base runner, and I'll tell you why. If she gets the base, great. Yep. Okay, if they get her, you give more fresh, fresh at bat to start off the fourth. Of course, it would be even better if she would hit one in the gap. Clark is going. Ball outside, throw goes all the way into center fields. And Clark's got a stolen base. That is number seven on the season for her. You don't know how much I truly appreciate them doing that. Yeah, did you, uh, are you on like a walkie talkie with no. Coach Rittman or something like that? No. Or you got like a little thing in your ear that I can't see? I get if you just. She called it exactly. Yeah, if you babble stuff enough every once in a while you get one right. <laughs> When hit towards center field, Cheek settles under it for out number three. So Salem Ward has done a great job in the circle so far for the Spartans. They'll see if they can get the bats going here in the bottom of the third. Okay, there you go. Yuck. 
Salary? We don't get one of those. Couple of games on the ACC Network coming up for the Tigers in the next, what, uh, nine days or so. Wednesday, hosting Charlotte at 7 o'clock. And then next Sunday, concluding the series against Virginia with that Sunday afternoon matchup at 4 o'clock. Temperature is dropping a little bit here. The wind's been blowing consistently out toward left fields. Feels like the temps are down in the 50s now, and this place can get chilly when the wind starts blowing, Scott, as you well know. Absolutely. And Wednesday night, that Charlotte club's a good club. Lofton, Cheek, and then back to the top of the order with Cumby as you see that wind whipping around towards left field. Yeah. Due up for the Spartans here in the bottom of the third. That one's popped up toward right. Jacobson settles under it for out number one. And then steps Jaden Cheek, a name that should be familiar to Clemson fans. Yep, she's a former Tiger. She was a member of uh, the first two teams here at Clemson. Decided that she was uh, wanted to go somewhere where she may get in the lineup a little bit more regularly. She would love to get a hit against her old squad, and that's not going to happen here. It's one pitch, one out. And that's very quickly two outs for the Spartans here in the bottom of the third. Jammed her. Hit a nice little two hopper there to Kegel over at first. Kegel's a very fine defender. We're back to the top of the order now. Delaney Cumbie reached via error to start the game. She's the only base runner so far for the Spartans. Yeah. Hit a Looks ball to strike out. one. Yeah, hit a ball out there to the shortstop, kind of handcuffed her. You don't see a catcher hitting leadoff very often. Cumbie's earned SoCon Player of the Week a couple of times this season for her bat. Mm -hmm. Hitting 345 on the year, I guess so. Four home runs. She's knocked in nine. Not bad. Right up the middle for the single. Well, they do it on Q Force, don't they? They do. That's the first hit of the game for the Spartan Club. Cumbie will be on first base for Mason Brown. And that was a no-joke base hit. Uh, what I mean by that, nothing cheap about that. She saw it, she hit it hard, right back up the middle. Of course, Clark got over there in plenty of time. No chance for her to stretch it. But now with two outs, Millie Thompson is going to try to get this out here to close things up. They don't want to have nothing started for Greensboro this late in the inning. Mason Brown steps in. Hitting 221 right now. Came into the game hitting 234. With seven home runs, 21 RBI. She's just 5'3. She's a senior, but it's a lot of pop. Not a basketball team. I mean, you can be 5'3. I wasn't saying it like that, but usually your big <laughs> home run hitters are a little bit taller and bigger. Yes, they are. I don't think usually your second baseman. That's and that one is ball. inside of the bag. It's going to go to Jacobson and right. She's going to quickly get it back into the infield. That's going to keep Cumby at third and keeps Brown at first. So well played by Jacobson out in right. Runners on the corners now with two outs. There's a lot of things to talk about right here. Mark, first of all, this is what happens when you're pitching from behind. She was 2-0 in the count. She turns right on the ball, hits it right down the line. And as you said, the right fielder, Jacobson, did a great job of getting over there to it. But now UNC Greensboro's got a chance to draw first blood in this game. And it was all of this is after two quick outs. I think she had three pitches and two outs, and now there's runner on the corner, runners on the corners with two outs. Jordy Chartrand struck out her first time up. This is this is a good measurement of your pitcher right here when they pitch what I call pitching under stress. I mean, when you're out there with nobody on, I mean, you can be free as a breeze. But, a but Millie Thompson, she had an answer for it. Valerie Cagle scoops up at first base. We are off to the fourth inning. Still no score in Clemson.
Headed to the top of the fourth. Nice crowd on hand here at yeah. McWhorter Stadium, like always. Averaging over 1,850 fans per game so far this year. Really nice crowd again today on a Friday. Do up this inning, Valerie Cagle, Caroline Jacobson, and Aaliyah Logaleo. Tigers would love to put some runs up in support of Millie Thompson. And as you mentioned, Scott, second time through the order for Salem Ward, who's been lights out for the Spartans so far. Yep, the, uh, the first two hitters on the second time through, I mean, we saw, uh, saw Mackenzie Clark beat out a bunt single, and then we saw Matty Moore hit a long fly ball out to center field to end the inning. But this is where the adjustments start. And this will be a good indicator. Well, Kegel had a hit earlier. A single in this game. Her average is now up to 529. She looks at strike two. Good pitch on the inside part of the plate. Again, Tigers the visiting team in this game today as part of the tournament. Kegel hits one high into left fields. Lofton out there for out number one. Just missed it. She hit it off the end of the bat, went the opposite field. We see her hit a lot of balls out of the park opposite field, so that's not unusual. But uh, so far right now, Everything that uh, is going on out there is the pitchers are having their way, aren't they? So far, Caroline Jacobson, who had a foul ball to the third baseman her first time up, would love to get something going for the Tigers. Mm -hmm. Again, Cagle reached with two outs in the first, and Clark reached with two outs in the second, or in the third, excuse me, and she did steal second base, but they haven't put any pressure on Ward at all. No, and this young freshman from North Carolina is just showing that she's up for the challenge. Lexington, North Carolina, to be exact. Line foul. Turned on that one. Coach Rittman. A less agile coach could have been hit. <laughs> he was ready. Yep, he was ready. I did notice, and this is noteworthy for so many reasons. There you see Johnny Ball game, but his wife Lori has now made it to the ballpark and is sitting by the first base dugout. That means she's officially running the program now. So he's taking signals from her now. If he's got any sense. Okay. He seems like he does. They're great together, a lot of fun. Misses outside, yep. and that is the first walk of the game for Salem Moore. That, that's the first time we've seen anything like that. I mean, even close to it. See there, Coach Rittman staring in. So, Aaliyah Logaleo had a hit in an RBI in the first game. And kind of hit a weird pop-up to the catcher her first time up, right off the hands, went about 10 feet up into the air. Yeah. So she'd love to try to get a hold of one here. She was out before she got out of the batter's box. It was just, I mean, a, just a little quick up and down. It was weird. Take Jake, strike one. Jacobson does have five stolen bases this season. Coach Rittman loves to have his runners be aggressive. Yeah. Just outside. These two teams will play again tomorrow in the last game of the tournament. Boy, Logaleo was way out in front of that. Oh, look at that play down there at third base by Coach Rittman. He'll want to know. He'll want to know if we Let's say something about this. I'm calling for the replay off the screen. All right, look at that one-hander. Tell me he still doesn't have game. You know what he's thinking now? Man, my hand hurts. <laughs> I think he's wondering if, if we showed the replay or not. We oh, did, Coach. He's quite sure we showed the replay because he knows that 
we analyze a lot of his work. But, you know. Looked like he bobbled it just a little bit, but didn't uh, lose his cool at what, all. You, didn't lose I, his cool. I, yeah, I'm complimenting I, the man. I saw a little bit of a trap. I saw it, too. It still counts. Ball got out there into the into the bullpen. Looked like Maddie Spell. Yep, she had to gather that thing up. Can't tell if Spell's down there sitting. She's throwing a little bit right now. Let's head out toward left field. Another easy play for Lofton and two outs. And you what? You got to tip your hat to this rookie out there on the mound. Salem Ward has been up to the challenge. And Spell was uh, Southern Conference Pitcher of the Week earlier this year, so. I can believe it. I'm going to guess short leash for Ward if something were to happen, but she's been so great so far, I wouldn't I wouldn't do anything with her. Yeah. Ariel Oda up now. She had a line shot to third that Maxwell made such a great play on earlier. Kind of a delayed steal. A good throw might have had her, but Caroline Jacobson has the stolen base. She's in scoring position. And that's aggression, getting a runner in scoring position with two outs. You watch. Yeah, she did not get a very good jump at all, no, so. It wasn't a delay steal, it was a bad jump. Yeah. You're exactly right. <laughs> I was trying to give her credit. <laughs> She'll appreciate Technic that. Technically a delayed steal. So a single from Oda might score a run, and she hits one down into the corner, gets by the left fielder. Tigers take the one nothing lead. Ariel Oda delivers a big time clutch hit again. Yes, she does what she does. That ball was hit sharply. The run was going to score no matter what. And I believe it, it will go as a double all the way around. The ball was hit sharply. Yeah, might, even if she would have fielded it, I don't think she could have come up, got her balance. And got the runner at second. Yeah. I don't think so. We'll see how they score it. They call that a double. Yep, and I agree. So the walk to Jacobson comes home to roost. And the aggression on the stolen base. And Abby Vieira has a chance to add to the lead. Hits one out into the right center field gap. That's going to score Oda. So two pitches, two hits, two nothing Tigers. Isn't it crazy when they score one, they it's just wild. score two. I mean, they don't, they never seemingly put up a straight number. And this ball is drilled. Otis was as well, but both of those doubles were hit very hard. And Salem Ward had seemingly been unhittable practically. And Vieira's ninth RBI of the season and the Tigers Boom, boom. And we're seeing adjustments the second time through the batting order like we talked yep. about. It's working for the Tigers. So you've got speed on in the batter's box now with Ali McClesh, who loves to bunt. They're in a little bit at first and third, but let's see what she decides to do. Shows yeah. bunts. Yeah, with a base runner on, they have to leave the shortstop a bit deeper than they normally do against Mecklish because of the being able to, to guard the, the stolen base. So Salem Ward was cruising right along until the walk to Caroline Jacobson, the big hit from Ariel Oda, and then Vieira comes right behind her with another one. Another pop to left field, Lofton grabs it, but the Tigers, two runs on two hits, take a two nothing lead. Millie Thompson coming back out for the bottom of the fourth. Four ACC teams in the top 25 poll, the ESPN USA softball. Tigers at four, Knowles at six, Hokies at 13, Devils at 15. And those are all four good teams. They are. They're very good teams, well-coached teams. And I want to say hello to my buddy Pete Diamore, who coaches at Virginia Tech. And the reason he's my buddy, he used to be the head coach at Kennesaw State University. Nice. He came in a couple of coaches after I, my retirement. First pitch to LaGrama, lined right back at Thompson. She makes the play and then flexes on it. And she, that laugh, that wow. laugh, is, that's, that is right there. She, what she's doing is she's stalling until her heart starts back. Because <laughs> this ball is hit right back at her. She catches it. Now watch her. Now watch her. 
She's going to turn around to Mackenzie Clark in the outfield and muscle up. I don't guess we have time for it, but it was great. Watch this. Oh, never mind. Yeah, first pitch into Maxwell is a ball. Great. great that was a great reaction by Thompson. We'll get that back to you here in a second. Off speed a little low. Now let's take a peek. Watch this. Bang! Now watch this. Watch. He's going to. No. We'll get it dialed up. It's called a tease in the industry. Keeping everybody, uh, keeping everybody on their toes here. Yeah. Two and one now to Maxwell. Making me wonder at my age that I really see it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I did. Thompson misses outside. Three and one. Nope. You don't want to walk anybody. Here we go. Let's see if we get this one. Back to her. Back to her. There she goes. <laughs> <laughs> And all that's an act because her heart was not beating at all right then. <laughs> that's exactly what you do after every half inning here. You turn to the camera with yeah. the little flex. Yeah, I almost brought you to your knees of early pregame. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. Never mind. Yeah. We'll talk about that one later. Uh, another time, my boy. Another time. <laughs> so. Oh, that's one from Thompson's low. It's a walk. You don't want to do that after getting that first out. Well, you saw the walk uh, end up hurting Salem Ward in the top of the inning. Absolutely. Walks are ungood. Walks are ungood. Yeah. <laughs> needs to go like on a T-shirt. Yeah. So Jesse Shipley, she had two hits in her earlier game today. Off speed misses low. 1-0. They appeal down to first. They said she did not go. Jesse Shipley, again, not related to Will Shipley as far as we can tell. The running back, of course, for the Clemson Tiger football team. He's probably right over across past the outfield fence in the football facility right now. That ball gets away from the catcher, and now they've got a runner in scoring position. Yep. That shows you how quickly you've got to get yeah. back in your tunnel. A little lapse maybe in concentration because we've seen... Well, you joked about Thompson's heart racing after yeah. that shot right back at her, but she struggled mm -hmm. a little bit since then. Until then. Well, there's a strike. She had thrown six balls and seven pitches prior to that. That might have got her back on the rail. Let's hit foul. Evens up the count. And they call that a wild pitch. I think that was the right call. Oh, yes, very much so. To get Maxwell down to second. It was in dirt. Billy Thompson searching her fourth strikeout. Set is hit to second. More over to Cagle for the second out of the inning. Maxwell moves over to third. And that will bring up Blake Batten, who grounded out to third her first time up. Yep. So Thompson one out away from taking this to the fifth inning with a 2-0 Tiger lead. There's a good pitch. I like that call by whoever made it. Give her something comfortable to get ahead. Yeah. That's been her bread and butter so far today. Yep. It's her bread and butter most, most days in terms of her feel good. But that was a nice job. Oh, an even better version of the same pitch. Double, wow. Doubled up on her. That's just criminal. That was 50 miles an hour. That one stopped and rested on the way. So Thompson ahead in the count. 0 and 2. Swung on and missed. Strike three. She stalks off the mound. That is her fourth strikeout as we head off to the fifth. And let's take one more look at the great defensive play from Thompson. Line shot back wow. up the middle, speared. A little celebration after that. <laughs> We're off to the fifth. <laughs> Four scoreless innings from Millie Thompson. And a couple of quick hits in the top of the fourth inning. Had the Tigers on top here 
two to nothing over the Spartans. Reedy Davenport to lead off here in the fifth and back at the top of the order with Clark and Moore due up after that. You take three plate appearances out of the equation and Salem Ward has done an outstanding job. She has. But unfortunately, you can't do that. She gave up a walk and then two quick doubles and you're down 2-0. Davenport had two hits and three RBI in the game earlier today against Bryant. It's been so solid all season long for Clemson. Yep, transferred in here from Florida Gulf Coast University. Down in Fort Myers. Has really played a great third base for him. And it doesn't hurt the fact that she's hitting around 420 on the Not year. at all. Nice touch. She was a two-time, two-time defensive player of the year in the A-Sun Conference while down at Florida Gulf Coast. Well, she has locked down third base for the Tigers this year. Yes, she has. And what that allowed, that allowed Maddie Moore to lock down second base. Pops one out over seconds. Nice play there by Brown. I thought that might go a little bit further than it did, but an yeah. easy out number one. I think over there on the right side, and, and I may be wrong about this, but over there on the right side with this bit of a crosswind we got, it's holding the ball up a little bit. I think so too. It's not a true blowing in or blowing out situation. It's more of a crosswind. Back to the top of the order, Mackenzie Clark had a bunt single and a stolen base earlier. Smashes one out into the right center field gap. Look at her go on the base pass. She pulls up at second base with a quick double. And that was hit right yes. on the nose. That. Yeah, I tell you, Clark gets out of the box quickly. She is a joy to watch run. Look at her go. Well, it was double off the bat. And you see that, look at that. Never broke stride. The only question was, was he going to bring her to third or not? And I think he wisely put up the stop sign because he knows that either a hit by Moore or Cagle should easily plate Clark. And I know the Tigers would be very, very happy to pick up one more run in this inning. Insurance would help at this point. Millie Thompson has been very solid, though, in the circle for the Tigers. Matty Moore scored a couple of runs earlier today, 0 for 2 so far in the second game here this evening. And for the first time this season, to my knowledge, the umbrella hat has made an appearance in the Clemson dugout. Ah, very nice. The rally cap going. Now it may have been, uh, it may have shown earlier in the year, but it is on display now. Moore takes it high, two and one. There, there it we is. go. We'll see if it's effective. Does it help the Tiger Bats? Ball three and Ward behind in the count now to a dangerous hitter. Another dangerous hitter, Valerie Cagle on deck. You got to be careful here if you're Ward because Maddie Moore can drive it out of here. Nowhere close. And this is where you don't want to live with multiple runners on base. And Valerie Cagle coming up. This is not a good part of town. I think this might be. Now, let's see. This might be the end of the night. Let's see. Yep, this is going to be the end of the night for Salem Ward. And she has acquitted herself very well in this outing. Really, really impressed with the work. All right, so it looks like Maddie Spell will be the new pitcher in the circle for the Spartans. We'll take a quick break, sort it all out for you. Tigers looking for more in the fifth. <laughs> this is Maddie Spell in the circle for the Spartans. She inherits some danger here. Two Tigers on base, Valerie Cagle at the plate. And this is a situation where you're desperate to get an out somehow. Mentioned earlier, Spell was Southern Conference Pitcher of the Week, one of the weeks earlier this season. Product of Collins Hill High School in Lawrenceville, Georgia. 
Clark on second, Moore on first, Kegel, it's a slow roller towards Shorts. Throw over to first, not in time. The infield single loads the bases. Yep, that ball was not hit well. It was hit just slow enough that the shortstop could not get to it and make a play. Kegel runs pretty well, but the ball, it took that third hop. You don't throw many people out after the third hop. Got to be frustrating for Spell. You get yeah. Kegel to not make very good contact, and she still ends up at first base, and now you're in a big-time jam. That is so true because she get, you get Kegel to hit a ground ball and not even hit it sharply, and uh, yet you don't get her out. Caroline Jacobson, bases full of Tigers, looks at ball one. Yeah, right now, I would, if, if I'm Jacobson, if it, I'd have a very, very small zone because I would make her throw me something perfect to hit or take a strike here in this case. Yeah, Tigers looking to break this one wide open in the top of the fifth. Go! Oh. Jacobson with the foul ball off of Coach Rittman's leg. Yeah. He was big man on campus just a few minutes ago when he made that catch. He turned, his, he turned his back on the ball. Yeah. He'll end up in the training room. <laughs> That's my guy right there. Ball two, nowhere know, to put her. I know I kid him a lot, and deservingly so, I might add, but <laughs> if I were a parent, I'd feel very confident if my kid played for John Rittman, as I would if a, my kid played for Janelle Brenneman. Jacobson. It's one towards center field. Cheek under it. Clark tags and goes back. A great throw from Cheek. Probably would have had her. Well, they probably knew her arm. They probably had a yes. scattering report on Cheek, don't you think? I would think so, being a former Tiger and all. Yeah. They, they bluffed it, but they didn't challenge it. And I mean, that was right there on the button. So it feels like a big moment in this game right now. Now there's two outs, Aliyah Logaleo up. If Spell could come in and get out of this, that keeps UNC Greensboro right in this ball game. Yes, sir. If Logaleo could find a way to drive in a couple, give a lot of extra room for Millie Thompson. Yeah, Gapper here would be uh, large. Logaleo had an RBI in the game earlier today. She's second on the team with 21. Whoa. Looks at strike one. Logaleo's probably mumbling to herself. She missed a great pitch to hit there. Spell grinning as if she knows she got away with one. Bases full of Tigers as they look to add to their lead here in the top of the fifth in this Clemson Classic game. Now yeah, Spell's a pitch away. Funny game, a little bit here, a little bit there. Yep. Crowd cheering on Logaleo. This is high, two and two. Clemson, the visiting team here in this game. So it's the top of the fifth. Logaleo fouls one away. I think that's going to get up into the crowd. It barely does. So she gets another cut. Yeah. Right off of the top of the dugout, I believe. The wind freshens a little bit from right center to left field foul pole. Another 2-2 coming to Logaleo. Reaches out, kind of slaps one towards second. The scoop over to first, just in time. Maddie Spell comes in and does her job. She keeps the Spartans close. Beautiful night here in Clemson. Tigers winning this one, two to nothing. Millie Thompson's been dealing in the circle through four. One, two, three, 
count them four strikeouts so far and also helping herself defensively. Yeah, slapping that leather out there, covering up that line drive. You have to watch her turn around and give a little grunt. Oh, yeah, like I'm under control. You see Look the, at that distribution right there, Mark. She, I mean, nine out of her 12 outs have not been in the air. They've either been strikeouts or ground balls. That's a good thing. When 75% of your of balls are not hit in the air. And I would, I would imagine there's only been one or two maybe outs even recorded by the outfield. Yeah, only a couple. You see she's way ahead now. 0 oh and 2. There's been one out by an outfielder. There you go. Grace Lofton up. Checked her swing. She'll be followed by Jaden Cheek and then back to the top of the order with Delaney Cumby. That's who is due up for the Spartans here in the bottom of the fifth. Feels like a big momentum shift potentially for the Spartans as well. Yes. They, they got had bases out of a, loaded with one out and they got out of it. Yeah, they got out of a mess. Well, yeah. Everybody in this park, including Millie Thompson, thought she had her fifth strikeout. Yeah, you never have to worry about what Millie's thinking. <laughs> and uh, she struck the pose that time after that call. That one did miss outside. Full count. She needs to get back within herself yeah. now. The last thing she you does. want to do is walk a leadoff batter. You got to forget about it. Payoff pitch. Lofton got just a piece of that off-speed pitch. Yeah. Right here. She just Boy. gets a little of it. Oh, it's foul. Well, did you see the way Vieira jumped up on that and hopped? She was ready to go. She was. Very, very underrated situation is when evaluating a catcher that can get out of the box and field the ball in fair territory. Watch how quick she comes out. She was moving herself over as well to give her room to make that throw. Absolutely. Off speed, slap back up the middle, and Grace Lofton with the leadoff single for the Spartans. And that's what you don't want, but I don't know why, but I'm just I'm just telling you about the magic of the game. Yes. Leadoff hits do not score as often as leadoff walks. I don't know why, but I'm telling you, they, at least she made her earn it. So former Clemson player Jaden Cheek hit a soft grounder to Valerie Cagle her first time up. She would love to do some damage against her former team. I was guessing she might be asked to butt here, but uh, that looks like they're going to go another way. She's ahead in the count now, one to know. She's in the nine hole. Delaney Cumby back at the top of the order. On deck. Took a strike right there. Cheek hits one towards second. Tag the runner, throw to first for the double play. Taylor made. <laughs> Millie Thompson walking around high-fiving everybody that will come to her. That's a big, big, big moment in this game. Watch this. Maddie Moore does a great job. She attacks the ball, comes and gets it. There's a tag. There's a throw. And just like that, you got a 4-3 double play. And that was Madison May over on first. That is Valerie Madison Cagle. May, isn't it? But they've got Cagle down in the pen tossing a little bit. They do. You would think you would think someone in the booth would have told us that. <laughs> I'm kidding, our great crew down there. You know, the listeners at home have no idea what, what we're called and said about said about us off air, are they? <laughs> No, not at all. Yeah. It's probably better that way. Oh, I know it is. They haven't gotten Cumbie out yet. She did reach by error in the first, and she had a single back in the third. Yep. Thompson would love to get her right here. Yep. She has that misses. ball sharply back up the middle in the third. She did.
Two and two now to Cumby. Right in there, strike three, five strikeouts for Millie Thompson. And she cruises on in to the sixth inning. Let's take one more look. Millie Thompson's got that off speed working tonight. Yeah, a beautiful night to say the least Isn't in that, Clemson, South Carolina. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's a great shot, guys. Little purple, little blue, little gray. Even a hint of white. Some orange out there, too. Purple and orange. Yep, and a, that red, white, and blue in the center. Oda Vieira McClesh coming up for the Tigers, or at least due up for the Tigers here in the sixth. And Maddie Spell, who came in and got out of a what ended up being a bases loaded one out jam in the fifth, yeah, is back she, in the circle for the Spartans. Yeah, she inherited a mess and was able to work out of it. Oda drove in the first run of the game back in the fourth. Clemson would love to add a couple here. That one misses. Count even one and one. Actually, he called that a strike. I think she might have offered at it. Well, I mean, we'll have to see. Uh, well, the umpires are all over the umpire. <laughs> when I say the umpires, I'm talking about the ones behind the dugout. I mean, behind the backstop. What a catch. That ball uh, almost stopped on his hat. That oh. was crazy. Yeah, well, there. I think there's a little discussion as to ownership there. That one misses high. Let's see this fan catch again. Over Here. there, the bounce. Up. Got him in the face. And then spun up on his spun hat. Spun up on his hat. And the fist bump, well deserved. Uh, nice play. And of course, he can't act like he's hurt. Oda hits one back up the middle. Brown to Lagrama, out number one. Yeah. Now, we're only a five and a third innings throughout this game, but Mark, UNC, UNC Greensboro impresses me. I agree. This is a we well they, coached, yeah. nice, tight team. Beside that little outburst, yep. this would be 0 0. I mean, they do everything right. I mean, yeah, I mean, they did have a couple of things, you know, the hits jump bunched up and jumped on them, like you said, but they play the game correctly. They do. They go about their at bats a good, in a good manner. They've got good presence on the mound. Uh, the Southern Conference better come to play when they play UNC Greensboro this year. Abby Vieira had a hit in an RBI earlier. Yeah, she and Oda have their RBIs, don't they? They do. Back-to-back -back pitches. How about that? Middle bottom. Six and seven holes. Yeah, they've contained the usual suspects for the Tigers so far and are still behind. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. If you, I mean, it really shouldn't surprise you if you look up and down the lineup there's Coach Ripman. He's getting a lot of camera time today. He is. He must have paid somebody off. <laughs> Vieira hits one hard out towards center field. That is going to be over the center field fence. Solo shot for Abby Vieira. And it just kept carrying. I, I was pretty sure it was going to be a double, but I had no idea it was going to get out of here. But that thing just kept carrying. I guess she kept it under the wind. I don't know. But watch this thing. Oh, she got the bat hit on it really well. What a great position at contact right there. And the ball just kept carrying, 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 and just poked itself out of here. Caught me off guard. I thought it was going to hit the wall. Yeah, I, I had double written on my head already. Me too. That's a little better than double. That's a big insurance run for Millie Thompson and the Clemson Tigers as they stretch their lead now to 3-0. Yes, sir. 
Ali McClash steps in. Shows bunt, pulls back, ball one. So that was Vieira's second home run of the season. She's up to 10 RBIs now. Yep. And she, I mean, that just hit a laser. I mean, I, I, that ball was just hit like a rocket. And I didn't think it had the uh, altitude to get out of here, but it uh, proved me wrong. You know, JoJo Hyatt had a couple of hits in the first game. Yep. Talent in bunches behind the plate for the Tigers, both defensively and with the bats. Yes. Got the luxury of having two great catchers on this team. And when you have two good catchers, that means you have fresh legs. Yes. And that's going to mean a lot in the back half of this schedule. You know, one of the one of the blessings that Clemson may have to their advantage is that late in the year, the pitching, they've been able to spread out the pitching, the catching they spread out. You see them use a lot of pinch hitters. I mean, everybody's going to be a little bit fresher than they normally would be if you only had like eight or ten kids that could play. And when I say play, I mean really, you know what I mean, play the yes. game at a high level. Foul away, it'll be a full count. And again, on days like this, a lot of softball doubleheaders. You're going to do it, what, ten times a season probably? Yeah. To be able to have two catchers you do one will. game apiece. Absolutely. And then they're going to do a doubleheader again tomorrow. I'm assuming they'll alternate in the game tomorrow as well. Just yep. what a luxury. Yep. As opposed to at times, you mm -hmm. might add Hyatt back there for all four. Last, last year, you saw a lot of that. Slap single up the middle, and you've got some speed on the base pass now. Yeah, you do. It was a good piece of hitting. It sure was. Just went with it. If you want to see the dictionary definition of a slap hit. That was it. That's what you had right there. She's got eight stolen bases on the season. That leads the team. My guess is she won't be at first base very long. No, with a 3-0 lead, I would I would imagine that Coach Ripman will put his foot on the gas now. Just a guess. Reedy Davenport swinging at the first pitch, and that's going to be caught by the second baseman, and McClesh did not see it, and she's going to be doubled off well, of first base. Now, in her defense, she was going yes. on the pitch. That's so, right. So that was hit and run, and there was not a lot that McClesh could do about that. Abby Vieira's solo shot raises the lead to 3 0 Tiger. If the other game. Scott, I didn't know if you knew this, but you know, Clemson does play some other sports here. Football, they're pretty good at that as well. They're right across the way, past the stadium out there. It looks like there's some action going on. Yeah. I'd heard, they, tonight. I'd heard they'd started football here. Yeah. They do pretty good, it's too, It's catching they? on, yeah. And they draw good crowds, don't they? Fan base is growing. Yeah, that's what I hear. Millie Thompson back into the circle for her sixth inning of work. She'll be facing Brown, Chartrand, and Lagrama. That's who's due up for UNC Greensboro, who now finds themselves down 3 nothing. Does that change the dynamic at all? We saw Cagle warming up earlier. You've got that extra... Extra run now for Millie Thompson. Does that change any thinking about potentially going to Cagle if needed? Well, it may give her a little bit more of a leeway, but I can tell you right now, it's about winning this game. And uh, we talked about it off the air, but one of the great advantages is this. This is UNC Greensboro, third time through the batting order. That's right. They've seen Millie Thompson. They've seen the off-speed stuff. And uh, in case, just in case she gets jammed up or in case, the coaches get that rumbling in their belly that Greensboro's about to get something going. What a luxury it is to have Valerie Kegel down there Thompson yeah, nice. in the bullpen because after Millie Thompson pitches, the way she throws her approach and her style, which is great and is her own, you bring in a Valerie Kegel, it's a completely different look. It is. So Thompson's up to 75 pitches. That's not too large of a pitch count yet. No, not yet. This is outside. You don't want any freebies. No. Now, a leadoff walk, that will get the coach's attention. Payoff pitch for Millie. Fouled away. Nice little battle brewing here. Yep. 
Brown is one for two, has a strikeout and a single. Line drive over shortstop, goes all the way to the wall. Brown rounds first, fast throw into second base, but she'll be in there with the leadoff double. And there was nothing cheap about that one. The number two hitter in, in the lineup for UNC Greensboro just ripped a double to start off the bottom of this inning. We'll see if that gets Kegel up and going again. And steps Jordy Chartrans, 0 for 2. There's that feel-good pitch. Right now, if you're, if you're the Clemson Tigers, you almost want to play defense as if the runner at second base didn't even exist. I would agree. You Take want, the outs if you yeah, can get Yeah, you want them. three outs. That's what you want. Yes. I mean, I, the, the name of the game now is get six outs before they get three runs. I mean, think about it. It's mathematics. It just breaks right down for you. And uh, that's something that we employed all the time is when you get late in the game is figure out how many, if you got a lead, how many outs does your opponent have to work with? That was a good pitch there from Thompson. She's ahead of the count now, one and two. Thompson seven and oh on the season. Yep, and she's had, she's had some good fortune and she's made some plays herself. But the double play last inning will, is one that really jumps out okay. at me. Really helped. It felt like the momentum was shifting over toward the Spartans' yep. direction until that double play. And that was Maddie, Maddie Moore that started that thing. Strikeout number six for Millie Thompson. That helps, doesn't it? Sure does. That tells you a little bit about, about Thompson as well, that she still has gas in the tank because she's still making good pitches. You know, if you throw strikes, every once in a while they're going to get hit. Okay, <laughs> she hit a double. It's true. You know, shake it off and go back to work. So Samantha Lagrama. Because she's now your opponent's got five outs to try to get three runs. Again, you just, it's, it's just so, I know that's so, I'm not over, trying to oversimplify things. But it's just how it's an you easy have way to, to look at it yes. as, a, as a game manager, as a coach. You have to think in those terms. Think big picture. You know, I'm not worried about giving up one run. I'm worried about not giving up three. And you watch this right here. Yeah. We'll see if Thompson goes right after her. 0 and 2. Ball hits off the end of the bat. Watch that ball. Good job by Cagle that time coming and getting it. A lot of folks don't know this. I mean, Maddie May, excuse me, not Cagle. I got yelled at in my ear. That hurt. But uh, no, what I was going to say, that ball, that ball was spinning. Yes. And a lot of people don't know this. Even though that ball was in foul territory, if it spins fair, that's a fair ball. I thought it was going to spin back fair the I way did, that it came yeah, off the bat. And that ball had a funny spin on it. So. May did a great job of going to get the ball. That was not Kegel, that was Madison May. Thompson still ahead, 0-2. Just misses, boy, about half the crowd here in McWhorter Stadium thought that was strike three. You could hear him yell. And all the umpires behind home plate yep. did. Popped up, diving catch by Davenport for out number two. And that's what we're talking about. She was an all, a two-time all-defensive player in the Atlantic Sun Conference Player of the Year. And she shows you why. She comes in unafraid, dives to make the play. And there's a big out number two. Hung in the air just long enough. Davenport got a great break on it. Millie Thompson over there for the hug. 
Madison May scoops it up over at first base. That is out number three. Millie Thompson, six shutout innings. Tigers going to try to add to their lead in the seventh. But all. I'm just kidding. They were headed to the top of the seventh inning. Again, Clemson the visiting team here because it's a tournament this weekend. Millie Thompson, six shutout innings, six strikeouts, and uh, Abby Vieira with the two RBI, including the solo home run this last inning. Tigers would love a little bit of insurance. Yes, you can see the hoodies out. You've got blankets out. It's getting chilly here. Oh, yeah, it's gotten a little chilly. But you see the pitcher and the catcher for the Tigers have, have held up their end of the bargain they tonight. Have. Clark Moore and Cagle do up for the Tigers here in the top of the seventh. Maddie Spell still in the circle. Only blemish against her was the Vieira home run last inning. Kenzie Clark heating up. Couple of hits already tonight. Had the two run home run in the earlier game today. That average is up to 391. There'll be four more games in the Clemson Classic tomorrow. The Tigers will be taking on Jacksonville at 3 o'clock. And then UNC Greensboro again at 5.30 tomorrow. You can hang out right here on ESPN Plus with Scott and myself for those games tomorrow. Or you can come join us. Come join us in person. Say hi if you come by. Yeah. Get down there. Always stop, yell up, and wave. But be careful what you yell. Yes. This is outside, two and two. Good job being patient right there. You talk about this long circle that oh. uh, Mackenzie Clark walks every time after every pitch, and now I can't stop thinking about it whenever she's up. Yeah, we talked about that last week. We did. Didn't we? we did. That's a ritual. This is inside, and there she goes again in her circle. Here we go. Payoff pitch now. You don't want to put her on base to start the inning. No, you don't. But she's going to be hitting if it's close. She's she's controlled aggression. Fouls it away. Clemson Tigers ranked number four in the ESPN USA softball poll as well as the USA Today NFCA poll. Won two games already this week. Valerie Cagle had a perfect game this week. A run rule victory over Bryant earlier today. Trying to pick up this victory here tonight as well. They just keep on, the train just keep, keeps on rolling. And with no signs of stopping. You know what? And we saw today in the first game, we saw uh, Reagan Spencer and Rachel Gibson combine to pick up that win. Yes. Clark works the walk. That was a great at bat for Clark. She worked out of it. And as you said, if you're spelled, that is not what you wanted to do. Well, you say leadoff walk score almost every time. It just, I don't you know why. You talk about this a lot, so we'll see if it, it holds true. It's just part of the magic of this game. We've seen several leadoff. Uh, we've seen leadoff single, leadoff double, not score. So Clark has seven stolen bases now. She had six coming into the game. She stole a base back in the third inning. She's taken off, slides into second, and she is out. A fantastic yeah. throw from Cumby. Wow. It sure was, and it took a great hop. To, and, the second baseman did a great job here. Watch this. Pretty good job there of controlling that ball. So now no Tigers on for Maddie Moore. Count is one and one. Count is two and one. Valerie Cagle lurks on deck. She's got a couple of hits today. 
It's a moot point now, but I might have asked for a review on that. I was base. thinking the same. It was a funny angle. The ball got there before Clark got there. Did the tag get on yeah, Clark? Did the, yeah. Wasn't 100% sure that it did. Looked like the leg beat the glove, didn't it? Yes. Just the second time Clark's been caught stealing this season. More swinging, three and one. That might have been ball four. Yeah. It's hard, though, when you're seeing the ball like Matty Moore is right now. Yes. You, want, you want to go to hacking. If you're a hot hitter, taking a walk, does it feel like a failure? Oh, you know, it may hurt your feelings. It does. Yeah. Okay. Now, that's a that's a situational statement. I mean, if you take a walk, you know, one run game to right. run, move a runner up yes. or something like that. No, that's a great at bat. Like Clark had a great at bat to get a walk, you know. But when you're up, when you're feeling it, I mean, because hitting streaks come and go. Right. And every player warms up and cools off at different times. It's just a matter of how long they stay hot or how long they stay cold. A uh, little excuse me swing, and that's a strikeout. Yeah, and she's going to talk to herself all the way back to the dugout. She didn't want to, she didn't want to offer it that, but she did. Just well, couldn't help herself. Well, on three one, she kind of swung at one as well that she didn't want to. So you can see how frustrated yeah, she she's is. She's there going, gosh, darn it, Maddie. <laughs> so two outs now in the top of the seventh, and Valerie Cagle. They're re-entering Kegel. That's what you're seeing. Yep, we'll be read back in. Because she was taken out of the game while Madison May went out and played first base. So Kegel's three for five on the day to raise her average to 528. I mean, uh -huh. I just literally laugh every time I say some of these statistics for her out loud. Yeah. Kegel has not been in the circle yet today for the Tigers. I would think we would see her tomorrow. You think I, she'll start one of the two games tomorrow? I would think this team will see her tomorrow. Okay. I'm thinking, now I'm guessing, obviously, and that's all we I can would, do. I would think that's right. I'm guessing McCubbin tomorrow. And that one's going to be a double. And hammered out into left center, and three more hits for Valerie Kegel. Ho-hum, another day at the office for her. Yeah. And a runner in scoring position with two outs. Watch this. Right with the pitch. And she knew it, too. Did you see her eyes yes. stay on that ball? Man, that is pretty. What a great job of hitting. That lifts her average to 534. Yep. Wow. Caroline Jacobson walked. Stole a base and scored a run back in the fourth. She was up bases loaded with one out in the fifth and hit a fly ball to short center field. She'd love to make up for that here. See yes. if she could add one more run of insurance for the Tigers. And you can tell they're going to be aggressive right now because Kegel's got her running glove on. You know, now you have running gloves. Yes. Mark. That's very important. Let's hit foul. No broadcasting gloves for us up here. No. Yet. We're still old school. The oven mitt. Yeah. You know, somebody did that. They, they, they said, why don't we just take an oven mitt and make it look a little <laughs> bit different? And now they made a million dollars. Well, I want to say it was Ozzie Albies for the Braves last year yeah. broke his hand sliding into second base, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm -hmm. So it can happen. It's grounded short. Scooped up by Shipley over to LaGrama for out number three. Tigers are three outs away from win number 23. We'll see if they can get it after the break. There you see Millie Thompson. She's got six strikeouts to go with seven ground balls. Got a double play mixed in there. And that's why it's got an odd number. I was doing the math, too. Thanks for reminding me of that. 
Shipley, Batten, and Lofton do up for the Spartans. It's their last hope here in the bottom of the seventh. They're down to three outs and eight strikes. That's probably taking it a little bit too far, but that's, right. that's how we well, think. That, that's like in a, a 201 math but that, class but that's for how, me. But, but that's how we think. Coaches are strange people. Whatever works. Thompson's ERA back down below one. It currently shows at .96, would go down even more. She could work her way through the seventh here. Yep. She's ahead in the count, one and two. The Tigers have the luxury of having Cagle down there, but Millie Thompson definitely deserved a chance to come out here to try and close it. But I don't think there'll be a very, very long leash on this one. But I do think and unless some trouble really precipitates, she'll get a chance to close this thing out. And I know she's not on any kind of pitch count, but it is running up towards 100 now. Yeah. But one of the good things is, is she, I mean, a lot of her pitches are not stressful pitches in terms of she off speed. Right. That's a good point. There's the off speed like strikeout that. number seven. That one was at 49. Gosh. Went from 63 to 49, and that's uh, it's just not fair. I'm, no. I mean, if I'm the hitter, I'm just going to stay there. Uh-uh, we're going to do this again. <laughs> You're not going to treat me this way. She's had a strikeout in every inning that she has pitched. Yep. Except for the third. And the one thing she's doing, she's still pouncing around that mound out there or that circle or whatever you want to call it. We know it don't have a hump on it. Blake Batten. 0 for 2, struck out once, hit a grounder to short. Fast pitch softball purists get infuriated when you call it a mound. It's a circle, it's flat. Well, I think we all know that. We did three games together last weekend. We've done two today. I think I've called it a mound once. Good it slips you. up every once in a while. Good for you. Well. I don't know. She hit that one almost directly back over her head. Yeah. Somehow. That's hard to do. It is. Look at that kid right there now. Need a little something in Loving my cup. Life. Need hot chocolate in the cup now, Mom. Friday night at the ballpark. Yeah. Can't beat that. Two two count. Millie Thompson looking for win number eight on the season. Gets strikeout number eight. Back to back here to start the seventh. Yep. You can see she's feeling it. The bottom just falls out of that changeup. That changeup has just been a work of art. Oh. All evening long for nasty, Thompson. Nasty, 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 nasty. So Grace Lofton is the final hope for the Spartans if they're going to keep this game going. Millie Thompson about to throw pitch number 100 in search of a shutout and a complete game win. Little dribbler foul. Smart play by Vieira to get her glove on that. You yep. talked about the spin on the ball yep. sometimes and how that could roll back into fair territory. She hustled out there and got it. She did. <laughs> Grounder to Logaleo. Throw to Valerie Cagle. It's a shutout. It's a complete game win for Millie Thompson. Eight strikeouts, her eighth win of the season. And it was very well done. Nice and clean by Millie Thompson. Did a great job. You want to watch this, you're going to see Logaleo play the ball perfectly. Waited on that long hop, got her body behind it, made the throw over to Kegel. Drive safely. Final thoughts, Scott. Two wins for the Tigers today, exactly how they would have uh, ordered it up. Yep, and they, they got to play against a pretty doggone good team tonight, and they rose to the occasion. They took advantage of chances when they scored. 
We saw timely hitting, then we saw a ball leave the park. Uh, the Clemson Tigers are basically about where you think they ought to be this time of year. Absolutely. They move to 23 and 1 on the season. Clemson Classic continues tomorrow. Tigers play at 3 and 5:30 right here on ESPN Plus. Join us for those for the cast and crew here and Scott Whitlock. I'm Mark Childress saying so long. Tigers win the nightcap 3 to nothing.